Hello and welcome from the Alt E store. Today I want to talk about the Kilovolt 2100 PLC Absorb Glass Mat Battery. These days, with lithium all the rage, you might be wondering, should I still be thinking about lead acid batteries? And the short answer is, if the conditions are right, and if you only have a certain amount of money you want to spend, then absolutely you should be thinking about these batteries because they're the next best thing to lithium. There are some great advantages to the Kilovolt PLC batteries. One is that they have a five-year warranty. This is just not something that we see very often with this kind of battery. Most lead batteries have maybe a, a six-month warranty, a one-year warranty, maybe two years, but five years is kind of unheard of. Second, they can do 3,000 cycles at a 50% depth of discharge. A cycle is when you discharge a battery down to a certain point and recharge it. You can do that 3,000 times with the PLC batteries. That's over eight years for a maintenance-free battery. And yes, these are maintenance-free. You don't have to add any water. They don't off-gas. You don't have to worry about vent fans. You just set them up, program them, and let them go. The next thing is that they can handle temperatures down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're in the northern latitudes and you've got a space or an enclosure that you don't have the ability to heat, these could be the perfect battery for that project. Finally, these batteries can live in a partial state of charge. Most lead batteries require that you charge them fully every day, at least once a day. Otherwise, the sulfite crystals will build up on the plates faster than you might like, and your batteries will, will die sooner than you would prefer but not everybody has the ability or the attention to fully charge their batteries every day. With these batteries, at the end of the day, if they're 80 or 90% charged or 70% charged, they don't care nearly as much and sulfite crystals will still build up much more slowly than with their competitors. In this video, I'm gonna talk about 12, 24, and 48 volt string configurations I'm also going to talk a little bit about how to situate the batteries for the footprint on the floor and give you some tips and tricks for cables and battery bus bars. So please stay tuned. All right, here's the Kilovolt PLC as it arrived from the Alti store, still in the box. I'm going to take a box cutting razor blade knife, cut the box open. And the first thing to notice is this baggie of parts right here. This is extremely important. Set this aside and don't lose it. Now that we have the battery out of the box, a couple of notes about mechanicals. First, protective cover comes off easily enough. Next, positive terminal and negative terminal. We've got five millimeter hex nuts that connect the brackets to the terminals. Each bracket has a 10 millimeter nut which can attach a battery cable to the batteries. You can see a standard washer, a lock washer, and the nut. You don't have to use the brackets. If you're just connecting the plates to put the batteries in series, you can connect the plates directly to the terminals on the battery. But if you want to connect the battery, battery cables vertically, you can connect the bracket and connect a battery cable to the bracket, which I'll demonstrate next. Okay, here's four batteries. They're set up in a 48 volt configuration. You can see we've got the steel plates I mentioned connected positive to negative, positive to negative to put them in series, a 48 volt bank at 180 amp hours. I took off the brackets on these terminals in the middle just to be able to mount the plates to the top of the terminals. A little bit easier when it comes to clearance with wrenches and whatnot. Uh, being close to the wall like that, but I did leave the brackets on the left and the right to connect the battery uh, cables to the battery bus bars. There's a few things going on here that I want to talk about. One, I put the bus bars up on the wall a little bit higher because there's a good possibility that I want to add four more batteries or even eight more batteries 
And I've got to situate the bus bars such that, you know, that all the different cables from the different strings of batteries can reach the bus bars. So that's something that you would have to think about depending on how many batteries you want to put in your system. Another thing is that I put the fronts of the batteries, the side with the terminals, facing the wall so that there's less cable that has to go from the terminals to the bus bars. That means less impedance, so the energy flowing to and from the batteries has less far to go. And also, it's just cheaper if you can go with shorter cables. If you want to build a battery box, having the cables be shorter, you know, running a shorter distance from the terminals to the batteries will make it easier just to manage the cables inside the box. And then of course, you know, let's say I wanted to put four more batteries and I put them right to the right of the existing four, I would use the same length of cable to parallel one string to the bus bar and the other string to the bus bar to have the same impedance between the two groups of four. And then of course I wouldn't have a very far run if I wanted to connect this bank to that inverter input. You can see it's very, it's only a couple feet, maybe 36 inches. Now we do offer a couple of battery racks. We have a two shelf rack that holds four batteries per rack and we have a four shelf, a three, excuse me, a three shelf rack that holds three shelves of four batteries. Those are super nice. Um, they're made by Outback. They're, these batteries fit perfectly into those and they come with breakers for each string of batteries and a plexiglass cover. However, if you wanted to build your own box, you can see by the tape measure there, it's roughly 24 inches by 24 inches, and the batteries are about 12 and a half to 13 inches tall. So you might want to build the battery box, maybe 15 or 16, 16 inches tall, just to have some clearance to work with the cables and the terminals. So this is a different physical configuration for the Kilovolt PLCs. You can see I've got them situated so that the long edge of the battery is parallel to the wall, so they don't stick out as far from the wall as if they were situated in the prior video, uh, the prior example. So you can see what I've got here is a 24 volt configuration. You can see the plate right here is connecting these two batteries in 24 volts. You can see the plate right there is connecting these two batteries in 24 volts. And then you can also see a positive and a negative from the group on the right. And you can see a positive and a negative cable from the group on the left. And you've got your negative bus bar on the right and the positive bus bar on the left. Now, as far as configuring these, as, you've, as you can see them now, you can also see that they only stick out maybe 12 or 13 inches from the wall. So it, it doesn't take up as much space jutting out from the wall. And you can see that they're about, the bank as a whole is about 48 inches long. So again, if you wanted to build a battery box, you're looking at about maybe 13 inches by 48 or 49 inches. Now you can see that there's four batteries. These are connected in, uh, 24 volt configuration as I showed you, but you could also connect these in a 12 volt configuration and have four batteries. You'd have four positives going up to the bus bar and four negatives going up to the bus bar. Um, you could also connect them as you see now in series to have a 48 volt bank, in which case I'm not sure if you could use a plate to clear from the bank on the right to the bank on the left, but you could certainly use a battery cable to connect these two terminals and put the batteries in series for a 48 volt bank. Okay, everybody, thanks for learning about the Kilovolt PLC videos. And remember, if you have any questions or any considerations you'd like to share with us, please feel free to reach out. We're only a phone call or an email away. Thanks and have a great day. And remember, press that like button.